this fella, Big Jeff, is in the house. He says, "Do you know what would who would have went over in your planned match with Mike Orson?" No, I don't know. I mean, uh, anything would be hypothetical. If you're asking me to book it right now, um, I think uh, I would have. I think I would have been uh, holding two belts uh, mm. after that match. You know. Um, that would have been awesome and literally there's a you know um no pun intended but um also even you know having rematches maybe setting up a three out of five or something but first we'd have to set the standards in that first matchup that never happened him he was great uh but i think and this is in my opinion being biased him having the he the heavyweight belt i think made him stronger and i think me having the tv championship belt made the tv belt stronger mm -hmm. so i think that would have been the difference i'm presuming this is the time when mike jumped ship to wcw so that's why the match never happened um because we don't really talk about mike Orson very much on the show and i really enjoyed him he was one of my sort of like un you know like the undercover favorites like everyone's got the favorites like the rock or whoever but, like, Mike Olsen was always one of my favorites. Uh, did you ever wrestle him, ever? No. No, I never mm. did. You know, we were, I guess we were both in the Alliance, so we had done some segments mm. together. Um, and he was my road wife for a <laughs> while. Uh, we, uh, in 2001, I guess, in uh, maybe 2002, I don't know, but we we traveled together, and he was, you know, definitely one of my, uh, one of my better friends. And one of my several friends to decide to hang themselves, which um, I'm going to have to look at the list of them and see if there's a pattern. Cause I grew up in a house where someone hung themselves. So mm -hmm. I have that in the back of my mind, you know, how that foreshadowed um, Ashley Massaro, um, the lion, um, lion heart in, in England. Um, well, <clears throat> obviously Chris Benoit, but uh, there's, you know, there's a huge list and it's, it's, it's weird studying the patterns of life. Never saw it coming. You know, um, it, it hurt a lot to know that uh, he would have opted to do that to himself. Yeah. Uh, he loved his kids so much. He loved his kids, not his wife so much. Loved his kids. I could not imagine that he would do that to them. You know, he would just tell me he can't wait to get home and smell them. He was like a dog in that way, which I don't know anybody else that has explained themselves like him. But he always he, he used his nose a lot like a dog. And he used to love just smelling his kids. And and he would talk about that. And uh, and then, you know, like I said, I get it where his wife and him probably got in a really bad fight because it didn't seem like they had the best loving relationship anyway. And I, and I would imagine she probably threatened to take away his kids in my mind. That had to have been what happened. Yeah. Now uh, I'll probably end on two, two questions unless uh, it's a very short answer. I love hate eight says I saw a match between you and triple H where early on triple H said a few words and pushed you. And then you did your known pimp hand slap. Then you said a couple of words, and it went back to a usual match. Was there any heat between you and Hunter throughout your time there? No, <laughs> I have no idea of what this answer is going to be. No idea. Uh, well, what's the right way to answer that? Did I ever feel any heat? There was times. Yeah, um, there was times when I felt both like uh defensive that he looked down early on maybe before i talked to him about it maybe talked down and i and you know i think it's common knowledge that not only was the office but that it, it, it's been said a lot of times publicly that he was at least one of the people responsible for turning the idea of using RVD in a more productive way down. 
I think everybody knows, you know, like it was could have been RVD at WrestleMania, and he thought, no, nah, Rob's not a big enough star or whatever. Well, it's easy to take that personally, like I would, like my fans would, and then we'd have that like state of mind, you know, oh, screw him, he doesn't know him, you know, but if you look at it from the bigger picture and you look at him doing his job, and certainly he has a right to his opinion, you know, I mean, I don't even now – being the the uh, um, ninja master that I am, uh, if someone tells me they don't like me, I don't even necessarily develop bad feelings for them. You know, there's people that I like where if they like me or not isn't even a factor, and and that's just me and my RVDology, my special one of a kind insight, and and I'm always growing spiritually and having all of that to to frame my perspective, looking at the bigger picture he was doing his job with the opinion that he felt and how are you going to fault him for that? But it seemed like at the time it was more personal and he's just trying to get himself ahead and this and that. But he obviously really did think that himself was the best foot to, to put forward. And I think that um, he would have a good argument if someone was to debate that anyway. So, you know, um, you know, I, I can't tell you how someone else, feels uh, about me you know and and overall there's there's no uh there's certainly certainly no heat now on 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 my part um you don't see me at wwe right now and my guess is hey stop my, my the dog, i think the dog's a triple h fan <laughs> i might be <laughs> my guess is the reason that um they don't call me a whole lot probably has something to do with uh relationships that i built or didn't build when i was there or maybe it's just because i don't act like i want it enough which is certainly the takeaway i got from the one of a kind uh documentary that they did on uh peacock definitely that i didn't act like i wanted enough and and yeah i mean if you're looking for hungry and desperate you know go ring someone else's bell <laughs>